Sawadee Welcome to Thai Move Talk and another edition of Connections. I am your host, Brian Berletic. A lot of people are talking about this Facebook whistleblower, Francis Haugen. My name is Francis Haugen. I used to work at Facebook. I'm here today because I believe Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, and weaken our democracy. The company's leadership knows how to make Facebook and Instagram safer, but won't make the necessary changes because they have put their astronomical profits before people. Congressional action is needed. They won't solve this crisis without your help. My fear is that without action, divisive and extremist behaviors we see today are only the beginning. What we saw in Myanmar and are now seeing in Ethiopia are only the opening chapters of a story so terrifying no one wants to read the end of it. And a lot of people have had their hopes raised that now finally all of this abuse Facebook has been carrying out from the toxic environment that they create online to their partnership with the US government in interfering in the internal political affairs of nations around the globe. Finally, all of this will be brought to light and dealt with. But I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. If you are a whistleblower of any real significance, you're not testifying in front of the US Congress you are on your way to jail, just like Chelsea Manning, uh, who contributed to WikiLeaks, or Julian Assange, who received the files leaked to him from Chelsea Manning. Uh, this is him being arrested in London. Or Daniel Hale, whose name they don't even bother putting in the headline of this AP article, ex-airman sentenced to 45 months for leaking drone info. Daniel Hale was the man who revealed U.S. drone warfare killing civilians all around the globe. 90% of the people the U.S. was killing with their drones were innocent civilians. And he did this almost 10 years ago. And despite the entire world knowing about this, the U.S. still hasn't done anything about it. So when Francis Haugen uh, pleads to the U.S. government to intervene and fix all of the problems Facebook has, we can all rest assured that that will never happen and that the only thing the U.S. government and Facebook are going to do, uh, given the pretext Francis Haugen is just coincidentally creating for them, is work closer together, continue the abuses they have been carrying out together, and expand them. That's what they're going to do. And they're, and they're going to try to justify this in the eyes of the public, and they're going to use Francis Haugen and her testimony to do so. And when you find out who the people are behind Francis Haugen, it's all going to become extremely and abundantly clear. And so let's take a look at this article from Gizmodo. Who is Whistleblower Aid, the group helping Francis Haugen blow the whistle on Facebook? And if you come down here, they're going to tell you about how she's not by herself. She was not alone and never was. For most of the year, she's been counseled and protected by one of the nation's preeminent whistleblower organizations, the aptly named Whistleblower Aid. Who are they? Who are these people? Are they really the preeminent whistleblowing organization in the United States? I'm thinking probably not. But let's see what the Washington Post had to say about them in 2017 when they founded this organization. So this is former whistleblower starts legal aid group to guide would-be tipsters. So if you come down here, you're going to see something really interesting. The founder named John Tai says he will never divulge classified information he learned while at the State Department. If a whistleblower comes to whistleblower aid with classified information, he or she will be steered to investigators with security clearances and the power to do something about it. Who, who would have security clearances? people in the US government. So you have abuses being carried out by the US government, and then they're going to send you to the US government to report on it. It would be like witnessing the mafia murder someone in your neighborhood, and then going to the mafia to report it. All that's going to do is make it that much easier for them to cover up. And let's go back to Daniel Hale and his case. Let's imagine he didn't leak this information. Uh, nobody in the public would have known about it. He would have went to whistleblower aid. He would have told these people about this information. And then the organization would have directed him to people with security clearances, and they would have buried this. No one would have known about it, and certainly they wouldn't have fixed this problem because everyone knows about it, and they still didn't fix it. 
And so who are these people who are making up whistleblower aid? Who are these people handling Francis Haugen? And this is their official website, Team Whistleblower Aid has built a world-class team to support clients. What are their backgrounds? What do they all have in common? Libby Liu, U.S. Agency for Global Media, Radio Free Asia. This is U.S. State Department funded propaganda. These, these are the people out there lying the American public into war after war after war, carrying out the absolute worst abuses on earth in the 21st century. There's also John Tai himself. He used to work for the U.S. Department of State. He had all of these uh, top level security clearances and he also sat in on briefings with the National Security Agency. So that's two for two, people working for the U.S. government. And they weren't kicked out or anything. They, they left those jobs and now they're doing this and they still have all of these connections with the U.S. intelligence community. There's also Mark Zaid, who's a lawyer, and they don't really indicate or disclose any of his connections to the U.S. intelligence community, but he possesses all of these clearances. So how would you have these clearances unless you were associated with the intelligence community? And why would they give you these clearances unless they were sure you were never going to tell anyone anything that you saw, including the, the worst sort of abuses? They, they wouldn't give you those clearances. He would not have received this clearance. So he is also involved with U.S. intelligence. And then there's Andrew Bakaj, and he used to do investigations for the Department of Defense and the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. And then there is Kyle Gardiner, and they just say that he's a lawyer, and we, we don't know what other connections he might have, but he would be the outliner because everyone else has some sort of connection with U.S. intelligence agencies. And they obviously still do because that's who they're going to send you to if you have classified information. They said so themselves. So what is whistleblower aid and what are they doing with Frances Haugen? They're managing her. They're taking this information if it's even real and they're releasing it in such a way as to help advance US policies, both domestic and foreign. They're, they're doing it in a way to help augment and expand the abuses both the US government and Facebook are carrying out together, very much so together. and. Uh, to to show you what I'm talking about, this is an article from The Guardian, Facebook's role in Myanmar and Ethiopia under new scrutiny. And they're talking about Frances Haugen. And she's claiming how Facebook helped fuel violence and instability in places like Myanmar and Ethiopia. And it's just a coincidence that these are two nations being targeted by the U.S. for regime change. And she's claiming that Facebook didn't do enough. They didn't do enough to help back these opposition groups who are being portrayed as pro-democracy groups, but who are actually backed by the US government and they're being put out there in the streets to help overthrow these governments. That's what this is all about. Uh, and they're saying they didn't do enough. They didn't do enough for Myanmar. Look at what they did in Myanmar. This is Facebook's official website uh, on the situation in Myanmar. And if you scroll down, this is what they did in February. The, the same month, Myanmar's military ousted the U.S. client regime headed by Aung San Suu Kyi. The very same month, this is what Facebook did. Myanmar military banned from Facebook and Instagram with immediate effect. Events since the February 1 coup, including deadly violence, have precipitated a need for this ban. We believe the risks of allowing the Tatmada on Facebook and Instagram are too great. What they're doing is they're controlling the flow of information in Myanmar. Myanmar's information space is dominated by US-based social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. For some reason, the government never addressed this problem. And so Facebook is making the decision for the people of Myanmar, who gets to say something about the situation and who has no say at all. And they have decided unilaterally that Myanmar's military will no longer have a say. So on Facebook, and also on Twitter, Twitter did this also, they completely banned them. And I also believe uh, YouTube was deleting channels associated with Myanmar's military and current government. So this is what they were doing. Frances Haugen and the people handling her say, that's not enough. And so that's what this is all really about. It's about supercharging this abuse, not addressing it. 
And I want to point out one more article. This is from the New York Times from 2011. U.S. groups helped nurture Arab uprisings. And they're not just talking about the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, funding, training, and backing all of these opposition groups. They're also talking about U.S.-based social media platforms, their role in working with the U.S. government to do all of this. And it says right here, Facebook and Google and the U.S. State Department. This was a 2008 technology meeting, and, and really what it was was training. And they trained these people to use social media to divide and destroy their countries when they went back home. And that is exactly what they did in 2011. So this is what they did in 2011. This is what they're still doing today. And now they are signaling with this whistleblower, Francis Haugen, that they are going to expand this, that they are not going to maintain the status quo, that the US government and Facebook are going to work closer, more openly, and more extensively, and precisely to do more of this. What does this mean for countries like Thailand, whose information space is completely dominated by US-based social media companies like Facebook and Twitter? It means this is a threat to national security that is now expanding. It is set to expand, and so if it's not taken seriously, the danger is going to be greater and the fallout worse for the people of Thailand. We already see Facebook and, and Twitter deciding who gets to say things and who doesn't about the situation inside of Thailand. This is being determined by the US government and Facebook all the way over there in Silicon Valley. It's not being determined by Thai people. This is a huge threat to national security here in Thailand. Likewise for Myanmar, likewise for many countries around the world that still allow US-based social media companies to dominate their information space. China has banned Facebook. The reason they've banned Facebook is because Facebook is being used in precisely this way, as a weapon in information warfare. Uh, they have developed their own social media platforms that their people use. Their people can discuss how it's used, who gets to use it and who doesn't, and uh, what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. These decisions will not be made for the Chinese people by foreigners, and yet in Thailand it is. Thailand imports weapons from nations like China. They import Chinese main battle tanks to defend their physical land borders. They import ships and soon submarines to defend their shorelines. It might be time for Thailand to think about importing tools from nations like China and Russia who have successfully secured their information space so that Thailand too can defend their information space just like they do their airspace, their shores, and their land borders. That's it for this week's edition of Connections for Thai Move Talk. See you again next week. Sawadee kap.